that doesn't seem likely, but who knows, right? A little more. Okay, 1790. When I was in Dublin in April, Miss Chatlow forwarded me by express a letter from my uncle desiring me to meet him at once at Holyhead. I went in the first. I went in the first packet and arrived a day before my uncle, who brought with him Charles Kerr, whose conduct had been so giddy that it was necessary for him to be removed from London. He had run into great folly and extravagance at hacking, had been taken from it, and after remaining all the last summer at Commonside, had been in October, entered of the temple and bound clerk to Mr. Bicknell. Now, entering into the temple is not a religious thing. Back in those days in England, entering into the temple is an apprenticeship to become a lawyer. Um, over there. An ancient and eminent attorney whose habits of life not suiting him, he had eloped, but being caught was kept safe till he could be disposed of. In his dilemma, Dr. Morton sent for my uncle, and they agreed twas best to send him to me, and my uncle set out with him immediately for Holyhead. The doctor intended he should remain with me for two to three years, and then if he reformed so as to be capable of attending the business, that he should return and finish his clerkship with Bicknell. My uncle and I spent two nights together. He then returned home, and I sailed with my charge to Dublin and returned home. Dr. Morton gives me 30 pounds a year for his board and washing. He was at first a great nuisance, but now it's very useful to me. <clears throat> okay, so this is 1790. Now, later on, we know that uh, his daughter is going to end up marrying this, this Charles Carr, but basically, um, now, you know, that's another parameter. You know, it's 1790 here. 1790 and... He's still a minor, right? I mean, he could be he could be around 18 years old, 17, something like that. Again, that points back to around the early 1770s, if not. Okay. 1792. Um, I also procured from Dr. Morton at an advance rent of my own proposal a new lease of my farm at Dromar for my own life or 21 years. It is now, therefore, not in the power of my landlord to prevent my enjoying the fruit of my labors as long as I live, and I may finish my days if I choose in a spot transformed from the rudest state of manure to the state of considerable comfort and conveniences by my own exertions. The man who would not feel himself highly gratified by such a reflection has little sensibility to boast of. Okay, on the 4th of July, 1792, we had another daughter, whom by the particular desire of Miss Morton was named Elizabeth. Now, this is 4th of July, 1792, and let's just see, and he's talking about, um, this is John Tatlow and his wife, Anna Amory, and this was 1792, look down here at what I've got in my database, why is it? A little bit of there is Tatlow born in Drum. I have her as being born at Drumrora, which was the name of the place that he lived at that he built, John Tatlow had built. And there it is. Now, Elizabeth. Now, this is in 4th of July, 1792. And let's just go back and let's just see what happened in 1791. And in 1791, Mary Pratt had died. And guess who Mrs. Morton was on by 25th of April, 1791? That's right, it was Elizabeth Pratt. So Elizabeth there was named after Elizabeth Pratt, and the Mrs. Morton that um, he was talking about there, in fact, was Elizabeth Pratt. Okay, but that, again, uh, 1791 is only nine years prior to Charles Kerr's marriage, and so... You know, again, unless uh, Charles Kerr was conceived by Elizabeth Morton, uh, Charles Morton and Elizabeth Pratt, while she was living with uh, Charles Morton and his wife, Mary Pratt, and uh, Mary Pratt being an aunt, a cousin, or whatnot of Elizabeth Pratt, not supposedly not caring about the extramarital affair taking place under her nose and the pregnancy and birth happening. I, you know, you have to believe that if you're going to believe that Elizabeth Pratt and Charles Morton were the parents of Charles Kerr. 
that's the problem 